Oh, that was fabulous. Um, really hard uh, act to follow, folks. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, um, April Mathis, um, Richard Toth, uh, Stancy, Stacey Yu, yeah. and uh, Aya Ogawa. Um, Aya, come and take a bow too. Yeah, come. Yeah. Yeah. No, please, please. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, this is a completely different kind of play to the two that we heard before. It's colloquial, it's uh, first, third person, we don't know where we are, we don't yep. know. Uh, it's partly descriptive, it's partly um, subjective. Uh, what's going on in this play? Uh, can, can you give us some insights? Um, yeah, first of all, I, I do want to mention not only did Aya direct uh, the three actors who did the readings for the three plays uh, today, but uh, she was also the translator for the last excerpt that we heard. Uh, not just the excerpt, but the last play, um, Okada Toshiki's uh, Five Days in March. And it's a brilliant translation. I really uh, think that she did a fabulous job on, on Okada's work. Um, first of all, you have to know uh, uh, the setting for the play. Uh, it, was, it was written in 2004, won the uh, Kishida uh, Drama Prize, top drama prize uh, in that year. Uh, but it was about the uh, Second Iraq War in uh, 2003. Two. 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 Oh, gosh. Uh, has it two, been so long now? Um, at any rate, so the setting is uh, these peace marches, uh, various demonstrations uh, that were held uh, at the time in March uh, during the shock and awe of, 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 of the Iraq War. Uh, protesting uh, that, and of course protesting uh, any sort of involvement or uh, tacit approval on the part of the Japanese government uh, to this war. Um, and yet, of course, most of the conversation uh, that's, that's going on here, uh, most of the narrative is about this kind of uh, binge sex uh, that this couple are having uh, in uh, Shibuya at the time uh, that these demonstrations are being held. I should also add that the play has been performed not only in Japanese but also in English by the play company. Uh, and I think they also did a production of The Attic. Is that, is that right, Frank? And, uh, and uh, they're going to be doing <coughs> Okada's uh, play from uh, uh, 2012, um, The Sonic Life of the Giant Tortoise, which is uh, also a marvellous play. Um, Okada Toshiki, born in, um, when was he born? Uh, Yokohama, 1973. Yep. Um, he is, I think, the uh, leading uh, so-called young generation playwright, although he's, uh, he's not so young anymore, but uh, he came onto the scene with this play and uh, really uh, um, has, I think, established something new in the Japanese theatre scene. It's a, it's it's very new. I think you can tell from the from the language itself. It's kind of loopy, elliptical, kind of uh, up talk, uh, at least in, in in the English version. Uh, there, um, it's uh, stop, start, hesitant, repetitious in certain ways. Uh, it's a very kind of accurate way of uh, how uh, young people um, speak. Um, Rapid, uh, but but uh, sometimes uh, inconclusive and repetitious, um, and uh, the um, again I really have to credit uh, Aya's uh, brilliant translation of this because I've looked at the Japanese and I've looked at the English and then just just uh, it, it, she's done a wonderful job and you know the she catches the uh, the idiom of young people even in the English language so it doesn't feel like a translation at all. Um, Another thing that's, that, that we should uh, mention about uh, Okada, at least uh, in, in this work, and he's doing it less and less now, uh, but uh, in some ways uh, when you see his performances or his productions, uh, they, they seem like performance art because the actors are kind of um, jerking and gesticulating and, and moving around in ways that the, the body seems to be doing something completely different from from from. Uh, from uh, the text, the, 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 the movements of the actors is, is not some kind of mimetic response to uh, the text in a, in a sort of an obvious way. There seems to be some kind of um, sort of manifestation of other forms of kind of psychosomatic trauma going on. Uh, the, the body is moving as a form of kind of noise that kind of interferes with the text in various ways. So yes, he, he actually won a choreo choreography award at one that's stage right. yeah. one of his performances. And, uh, 
Yeah, and it's, yes. it, it is a remarkable disturbance in the body that uh, I think presents in these, particularly in these early performances where you have this very elliptical um, circular text and then the body doing some very, very uh, stamina-like movements. It's, it's a very traumatic kind of experience, I think, but also very, very funny. And very um, funny at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. As, we, as I think we saw. Um, Okada comes out of a, 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 a tradition in Japanese theatre uh, called the colloquial theatre movement, or the um, sometimes referred to by uh, uh, the work of Hirata Oizawa, um, the so-called quiet theatre movement, that uh, really concentrated on capturing Japanese uh, colloquial language. We have a, another uh, excerpt in, in, in this work of a longer work by Hirata Oizawa called Tokyo Notes, from the 1990, and uh, in a way, he was the sort of the uh, one who created what he called contemporary colloquial theater, uh, a kind of a language which was not sort of imitation of sort of uh, Shingeki realism, uh, trying to uh, make uh, drama uh, more responsive to uh, the way Japanese communicate and uh, social interactions in Japan. And uh, you see that uh, Okada, I think, has sort of taken that uh, a further step mm. Mm. Uh, in, in uh, using sort of uh, hyper-realistic uh, language and uh, it's, it's kind of loopy syntax uh, to say something uh, new um, and express something in a very sort of uh, interesting and intriguing way about contemporary society in Japan. And you were actually the translator of uh, Tokyo Notes. Yeah. So, um... Uh, the whole play is being translated, of course, as well, which you, mm -hmm. with your translation is a remarkable, also a remarkable translation, I think, of a, of a, of a you know, this kind of extraordinary uh, humour, but a uh, high, high degree of tension also. Uh, it's, so much of it is subliminal, mm, yeah. It's, mm. it's a real subtext, and trying to translate subtext is quite a job. Yeah. Um, Cody, we're just going to move into the final section of the discussion now and we'll, we'll open it to questions in, in just a minute. But before I do, I just wanted to ask you what you thought about the, you know, the hopes were for this volume. Um, <coughs> where do you see this volume going? First of all, I hope uh, that all of you will buy a copy tonight. Uh, it's on sale uh, for only $40. Uh, regular price is $75. Extraordinary cheap. Um, yes, it's, it's a real, it's a steal. Um, uh, certainly it's a textbook uh, for uh, students of, uh, of drama um, and I hope uh, that uh, it gets to be used uh, in the uh, context of, of, of world drama and theater courses um, and also you know, by people who are interested in Japan um, and uh, these are texts that can be um, staged and I hope that uh, people who are interested in uh, contemporary uh, theater in Japan, uh, which has some of the most interesting theater in the world, I think, right now, um, that, uh, that you will consider seriously uh, staging some of these excellent works. Yeah, I, I really hope that is the case, and I think we're starting to see that happen, I think, increasingly. So, uh, and it's and to thanks do... to CUNY, which is doing a great job in introducing many of these works to, to New York audiences as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... On that note, I think we'll open to questions for about five or ten minutes, and I think, Frank, you're going to uh, yeah, moderate that. Light, um, for the audience, and, uh, we are recording the event, so not only we will hear you better if you take a microphone, but also we will have um, the questions, and uh, so if there are some some questions for the writers, yeah. can you take it and hold it close, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, what you were just speaking about, the out-of-sync uh, behavior, uh, that is um, in the text somehow? Is it in the direction? It's certainly in Okada's direction mm -hmm. of the plays. Uh, the texts don't necessarily have to be done that way. Um, uh, about four years back, I think it was 2010, the play company did another one of Okada's works uh, here at um, 59 East 59th. Um, it was called Enjoy. And uh, they didn't try to mimic um, uh, Okada's sort of physical performance style. Um, it's, uh, it came across a little bit more like stand-up comedy. Um, so uh, 
that's a, uh, an artistic decision that was uh, taken by Dan Rothenberg, who directed that production. Um, so it's not necessarily sort of engraved, so to speak, in, 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 in the text that uh, these texts need to be done that way. Uh, Okada um, has his own company, though, and he has an ensemble of actors who, in a sense, work with his system of performance, if you like, that he's developed with them. And, um, and as uh, Cody said, he's using this separation of voice and body less in more recent performances, but he's, he's developed a theory of uh, performance around that idea as well, as uh, creating a certain kind of if you like, a certain kind of alienation effect. It's, it's a kind of, yeah, Brechtian alienation effect, but I think in this play particularly, um, the, the, the movements also uh, highlight some of the thematic things that are going on in the play, the, the, the schism between the public and the private, um, between the, uh, you know, what people say and what people do, um, what they think and, 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 and how, they, uh, how, they, how they behave, you know. Um, do you feel like you were able to um, really capture pretty much all of the, the uh, different theater genres and styles over the 100 years, which would be pretty amazing? Or uh, did you have to uh, be a little more, uh, uh, do a little more editing and say, boy, and, and if so, what are like the two or three styles that you really wish you could have found room for and mm. couldn't quite get into the book? Uh, that's a really good question. I mean, all anthologies are sort of um, editorializations. They're, they're, they're a form of censorship in some way uh, that you, you, you have to push out things in order to create something that looks like it's supposed to be a canon or something or other. Um, and uh, we did that with uh, some hesitation, to say the least. Um, were there any styles that that's didn't get put in? Um, that's that's a little hard to say. Um, uh, some of the contemporary stuff uh, is so varied um, that uh, it's we really needed to be highly selective uh, about that. Um, even in the realm of popular theater, we had to go with three distinct genres uh, for that. But there are many other forms, uh, you know, comedy and, 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 and various forms of sort of uh, straight popular drama uh, that sort of span a century um, that we had to rule out. So, uh, yes, we, it, it, it was a very sort of reductive exercise, yeah. I wonder whether, too, you're, you're trying to consciously fill gaps in the, in the translation project a little bit, too, because there are some writers who are translated much more often than others, and there has been quite a significant gap, uh, with the exception of your work, uh, on the early modern and the, um, you know, up until the early post-war period. Um, so... Well, for example, there was, there was nothing done on women playwrights of the early 20th century in Japan. Um, and I, I translated two uh, plays by women for, for this other book that I did uh, called um, uh, A Beggar's Heart. Um, we've included uh, a couple of early uh, 20th century women playwrights uh, in this work. Uh, Enchi Fumiko, who's, who's known uh, mostly uh, as a novelist, uh, but prior to the uh, First World War, or Second World War, I should say, uh, she was predominantly a playwright, and a very good one. Um, Akimoto Matsuyo, uh, also an excellent playwright. She was active right up until, uh, when did she die now? I think in the 1990s. Uh, she had a long uh, career as a playwright. Um, just lost my train of thought here, but um, uh, so we tried to, to we tried to fill in the gaps uh, with 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 uh, some of the uh, some of the works and and introduce some uh, really interesting and intriguing playwrights that hadn't been covered in the past.
Yeah, this is piggybacking on what you were just, both Peter and Brian were saying, but um, in approaching the translations and the translation process, did you give any directives to your translators? Were, was there an eye toward certain approaches toward translation? Because you both know that there are many theories of translation, theatrical translation and approaches, and so mm -hmm. was it. Was, your, uh, was there a certain type of translation you were looking for? I was looking for something that could be staged, frankly. Right, um, that's, that, that, uh, it's, that it, it wouldn't just be a literary text that, that people would read, um, but the, uh, you would hear the living voices of people uh, in, uh, in the works. Uh, and so, I mean, I think in all drama, uh, language is action, and uh, that has to uh, come across very strongly uh, in, in various ways, that, that you can hear the characters of the, of the people, and and the emotions behind uh, the words uh, that they speak. And so we needed to imagine um, that these works uh, would all be spoken and, and, and uh, hopefully even enacted. Yeah. Uh, that was the most important thing. Um, uh, in terms of the selection of, of, of plays, some of them had been previously published. We did commission uh, a, a significant number of plays uh, to be uh, translated, and uh, there we went to people who knew uh, the uh, works, uh, knew the authors, and uh, whose work we respected, and and, uh, and commissioned those works. So then I um, would like uh, to, to to thank you for this. I think truly enlightening and inspiring discussion. I also would like to uh, mention that. Both uh, the attic with Yoshi Sakata, who was here, and Toshiki Okada, who was here. The American premiere readings were here. I think it also helped to get the productions done. They have been uh, good friends of, of our center, and it's so many, many years ago. So it's wonderful to see um, how uh, they've been produced. The book is now out, and then we feel we are part of uh, history. So please do come also then to our other events. We're having a very uh, big event uh, Monday to Wednesday. It's our uh, highlight of the season, the Pen World Voices. We have nine plays from tr nine different UN regions from all around the world in case you, you have time to come or come to other programs we do have. But first of all, I would like to again thank uh, Aya and also the actors. I thought it was you know, a wonderful uh, help and it made it such, make such a difference of the artists for you to come here and take out of your time of your life to do it. Thank you uh, all again. And also Peter, welcome again at the Greta Center and uh, Cody, it's also good to see you again here. Yeah. And thank you, and I hope you will all stay for the reception and, uh, and to celebrate the launch of this truly significant uh, work for the theater. Thank you. Thank you.